the junior middleweight mix it up in Miami. It's the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship. Making his second title defense, Mike McCannum. He claims his crown last October when he pounded out a lopsided decision over an outclassed Sean Mannion. Today, he faces his toughest challenge and a chance to prove he's the master, not merely a maverick. When he meets the quick-fisted arsenal of Beaven Braxton, the WBA's number one contender. With 24 KOs to his credit and on a roll of 22 consecutive wins, Braxton is primed to punch his way to prominence. They meet today for the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship live on NBC's Sports World. It is a 90 degree hot and humid day in Miami. And we're about five miles east of the Everglades. We're at the Dade County Youth Fair Coliseum on the Tamiami Park Fairgrounds. And we welcome you. Hi, everybody. I'm Marv Albert, along with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, boxing just ahead here on NBC Sports World. And the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship is on the line with Mike McCallum to defend his title for the second time. And today he goes up against David Braxton, a one-time crunk gym sparring mate in Detroit, Michigan. Braxton, 31 years old, and for Braxton, certainly a situation where it could be a final shot for the title. Doc, how do you break it down? McCallum, the champion, patient, willing to box, not take any chances. Now, what Braxton has to do is come out, discombobulate the old champion, make him fight his fight, and get out of his game plan. I don't see McCallum getting crazy. Braxton's coming in and taking chances. We'll be back to take a close-up look at McCallum and Braxton in just a moment. Back in Miami, we are closing in on fight time. Mike McCallum will defend his WBA junior middleweight title against David Braxton, a challenger who also has music on his mind. Vulgar Ray Leonard represents a junior middleweight contender, David Braxton. They are his role models. And while the 31-year-old Detroit native has found success by way of Emmanuel Stewart's cronk boxing program, he also has the aspirations and abilities of some of Motown's show business community. You send me around the world, I'd like to take your eyes and look up in the stars and see you smile. If you look into my eyes, Eli. David, that's a career change you have in mind there. You're going up against Michael Jackson? Uh, going up against Michael Jackson is not a bad idea. <laughs> Just the quality of your voice, I think you could, maybe you could do it. Uh, I, I would like to, you know. I would like to get into some music after my boxing career. Well, your boxing career is in high gear. You face Mike McCallum for the title, a guy that you work with for a year. Does that help you to work with a guy for a year? Yeah, it helps out a little bit, but, you know, working in the gym and fighting, it's two different things, you know. But they say there's a little heat between you two. There's a little animosity there between you two. Is that true? A little animosity? Well, I like to take Mike's title from him and I don't have anything against the man. You know, it's just a business. A way perhaps to merge Braxton's twin goals is to ask what advice he has for Mike McCallum today. Beat it. Beat it, Mike. Just beat it, beat it, beat it. Well, champion Mike McCallum isn't here for a song, as we'll see when Sports World returns to Miami. Right now, let's go to Dorothy Lucy in New York. Welcome back to Miami, and we are moments away from the McCallum-Braxton fight, both getting set to leave their dressing rooms, a route that Mike McCallum has taken, accompanied by an assortment of...
When I started out from Jamaica, I came to the United States to develop my career, my boxing career. Uh, I feel I was a good fighter at the time. I feel I was going to be a great fighter at the time. And I think to be with a great fighter, to be a great fighter who I am, I think you need a great man to promote you and to manage you. I tried to find a great guy to manage me. It was a little bit difficult. Most of the guys who I tried to, to manage me, they was either trying to beat me, rip me off, or do something, you know, like just dis to discredit me. Well, you work with David Braxton for a year almost every day. Do you find that knowing him as well as you do helps you for this fight? We change. I mean, I know I've improved over the year. So I wouldn't, you know, a workout is a workout. You know, in a workout, you just take your time and do things, you work on stuff, you work on things that you want to distribute, distribute in a fight. So I wouldn't really think that to make a difference. And here is David Braxton making his way. Record of 34 and 1. 24 by knockout, 31 years old, out of Detroit. He began his professional boxing career back in August of 78, knocked out five of his first six opponents. This after an outstanding amateur career, winning four Michigan Golden Gloves championships, played football, ran track in high school, but turned to boxing during his sophomore year, and as you heard moments ago, also pursued a, a musical career during high school. In fact, performed with a group called Past, Present, and Future. David, the lead singer. David Braxton has a good jab, strong right hand, solidly built, but more of a boxer and counterpuncher. And here comes the champion, Mike McCallum, 28 years old, from Kingston, Jamaica, now living in Brooklyn. He is 24 and 0, 21 by knockout, and in his last fight last December, as seen here on NBC, he stopped Luigi Mancio in 13 in Milan, Italy. Good crowd on hand, including Don Johnson, the co-star of NBC's hit show, Miami Vice. So Detective Sonny Crockett is here just to keep an eye on the fight doctor. We'll be right back. With the winner receiving Welcome back to Miami, Florida. Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, and we're getting set for the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship, Mike McCallum, David Braxton. Let us join the ring announcer, Alan Kaur, for the introduction. For this world title bout, we have the mandatory eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect, and three knockdowns in any one round constitutes termination of the fight. The judges, as assigned, by the World Boxing Association, Mr. Hector Hernandez from Mexico, Mr. Rojillo Perez from Panama, and the man in charge of this title bout, your referee, Mr. Roberto Ramirez of Puerto Rico. My name is Alan Tour, and I'm your announcer. Well, that's the first time we've seen a ring announcer introduce himself. Alan will be hosting several uh, In first shows the blue next corner, week. Wearing the gold trunks. He weighed in this morning at an even 154 pounds. With wins over Tony Serta and James Hard Rock Green, the WBA has made him the number one contender in this title bout. With a professional record of 34 wins, one loss, 24 wins by knockout, from Detroit, Michigan, here is David Machine Gun Braxton. David Braxton. And now let's meet the world champion. from Kingston, Jamaica, the only Jamaican in history to hold the world championship. Now fighting out of Brooklyn, New York, with a professional record of 24 wins, 
no defeats, 21 wins by knockout. Let's welcome the world champion, the body snatcher, Mike McCollum. Mike McCollum, 15 rounds for the junior middleweight championship. The scoring is on the 10-point must system. There is no standing eight. There is a mandatory eight. And the three knockdown rule in effect. When I say break, a step back, one step without breaking any point. Okay? That's it. Referee Roberto Ramirez out of Puerto Rico, veteran of championship fights, including Hearns and Cuevas and Chandler and Lujan, Arguello Mancini. One-time paratrooper and featherweight uh, boxer as a youngster. Roberto Ramirez and the judges Hector Hernandez of Mexico, Rogelio Perez of Panama. Scheduled for 15, Mike McCallum and David Braxton. loss on the record of Braxton dropped a hard-fought decision to Dwayne Thomas back in February of 1981 a controversial split decision Thomas is now a teammate of uh, Braxton both fighting for Emmanuel Stewart at the trunk gym in Detroit since that uh, one loss back in 81 Braxton has won 22 in a row including an upset of world rank James Hard Rock Green at the time he was world rank Mike McCallum's biggest victory, he knocked out the former WBA junior middleweight title holder Ayub Kalule in the uh, seventh round, and that led to Kalule announcing his retirement. McCallum often criticized for being a bit too careful, not going for the knockout, although he has a knockout record, but that's the result of a buildup of punches rather than a single blow. And a building up of his career. He was he was fighting in fear of fighters. He is very patient, as we will see. He's very calm about it. He works and he works. He expects to be here the full 15. Braxton, on the other hand, wants to get this over with. He's got to do things that get McCallum out of his rhythm and out of his fight plan. Now, you got to remember, both these men have fought many, many around in the gym together. They know each other. It's going to take a little bit of time to figure each other out now because they've changed over the last year, and they're trying to trap each other right now. A series of feints, a series of half moves to see what the other guy's got. Not much happening right now, except in the minds of both fighters. They're doing an awful lot of thinking right now. under a minute left in this first round from Miami. And it has been a filling out process in this opening round. You go along with what both McCallum and Braxton said, no advantage and that they do know each other. I know they tried not to give the impression, but uh, I'm told they were not great pals when they were together at front. A great deal of competitiveness goes on in a gymnasium. Uh, it, it, while it doesn't have a great advantage, it certainly doesn't hurt to know what the other guy's got. <laughs> Well, a lot of fainting. Not much else in this first round. By Old Spice, Aggie first sprint and new improved stick deodorant. When I'm in the ring, I want to win. I don't possess maybe one of the greatest puncher, uh, but I'm there for 15 rounds, 10 rounds to fight every second of it. I fight for the public. I like to, I'm entertaining. When I go in there, I like to entertain. I like to, everybody's going to say, Vito is a good fighter. And here is Mike McCallum out for round two to meet up with David Braxton. How did you score that first round? That's a tough one to score. Very tough. It was very close. The only reason I gave David Braxton the edge was that he was the aggressor. He was doing all the leading. And in an even round when neither one are doing anything to each other, the guy that's leading obviously has the advantage of the aggressor. The harder punches were landed by Braxton. Now, curiously enough, 
McCallum's corner. Eddie Futch says you're doing it just right. It's your pace. It's your way to fight. So he was satisfied with the first round. And Braxton attempting to go on the attack. Braxton's last fight this past May in Las Vegas, he stopped Tony Serta in four rounds. And Braxton does represent McCallum's most difficult challenge. Difficult in every way. Difficult because he is a top challenger and difficult because they know each other and they come from the same schooling process, the front gym. So here is Braxton looking to force the issue. Well, he's certainly chasing McCallum around, planning his jab pretty strongly, he's trying to set up his pace and get McCallum off of his rhythm. looking to use the jab to set up that right hand. He's certainly the busier of the two. And he took a right. Braxton also wide open. McCallum now looking to load up with the right hand. Having found pay dirt there once, he's looking to do it again. on 30 seconds remaining in the second round. It's scheduled for 15. So far, we've not seen much of the vaunted body attack of the body snatcher, Mike McCallum. Good right hand by Braxton just then. Final second, second round. This for the WBA Junior Middleweight title. And this is round three, and Bertie, we just uh, overheard in the corner of David Braxton, who uh, complained that he uh, got something in his eye, perhaps took a thumb from McCallum. Well, McCallum's been jabbing with a great deal of uh, intensity. Sometimes his glove is open. It could well be a thumb. McCallum, an excellent technical fighter. Very fast, throws precision punches. But it is Braxton looking to set the pace once again as we open up in this third round. I'm beginning to wonder whether Braxton isn't going to burn himself out too brightly here at the beginning. He certainly fought at a very fast pace. And McCallum has just been guarding and taking his time, trying to land that hard right hand. I just wonder if uh, Braxton can keep this up for 15 rounds. Okay, I know McCallum can. Left hook delivered by McCallum. Again, the left hand of Mike McCallum. McCallum is weathering all those punches. He keeps his eyes right on his opponent, and when the chance comes, he lands a good, devastating right hand. He just did again, and Braxton's in a little trouble. And McCallum going ahead hunting here this afternoon instead of the usual strategy of going to the body. Well, McCallum's got to work his way out of trouble because that did stun him, that right hand. Got to get out. Less than a minute remaining. This is the third round, scheduled for 15. McCallum knows he can land that right hand now. There he goes. and 
taken all of the punishing shots he's wearing out, and it's just the third round. So after they checked each other out in the opening round, then Braxton forced the action in round two, opened up in this third round, attempting to do the same, but Mike McCallum landing the telling blows. Way inside, Ben. Yeah, Ben. Some. Two up. Yeah, two straight up. Huh? And let's look at that first punch. This is the one that set up Braxton. He was almost gone. Right on the bus. And a good third round for Mike McCallum. And here is David Braxton out for round number four. Braxton is 31 years old, out of Detroit. Record of 34 and 1, 24 by knockout. He comes off a, a fourth round KO, stopping Tony Serta this past May. Mike McCallum in a tune up back in June. A second round knockout of Marcus Martinez. Last December, stopped Luigi Manchio in 13 in Milan. And last October, Madison Square Garden in New York, he won the title with that unanimous decision over Sean Mannion. That was a shutout. One judge had it 149, 123. McCallum beginning to exert his mastery right now. That last round took an awful light out of Braxton. You can see Braxton's punches no longer have that zip that they had in the first two rounds. McCallum just careful, just waiting. What does the fight doctor uh, scorecard show? I have Braxton ahead, very slim margin, 29-28 unofficially, but that last round was a big one for Mike McCallum. Scoring on the 10-point must system, it is handled by the referee and two judges. And there's McCallum to the body. Oh, three hard body shots. And the referee, Roberto Ramirez, says keep him up, Mike. Oh, those are tough shots landed by McCallum, who finished it off with an uppercut. Have taken everything out of Braxton. He did not respond well to those body shots. That's why they call him the body snatcher. Big crowd here, including most of the top promoters have shown up. The Don King production crew, Don, Bob Goodman and Duke Durden. Bob Arum. Top right, here goes. McCallum launching that attack. seconds to go in this fourth round and Braxton looks weary Mike McCallum unloading on David Braxton in this fourth round and Braxton will will last the round we're gonna stay right here a big round for Mike McCallum Brutal punishment for Dwight Braxton and a lot of work to be done in the corner by Citro. Let's look. The camera. The tape goes for those points. Stay down and just block your punches and turn with everything you got. You understand? Pull it, man. Go for power now, okay? Go for power. I don't want no hustling. Now. Hustling is over. Okay? Way back. Just take your time. Don't worry so much. Well, we wondered when the body snatcher would begin to do his work. And Mike McCallum, after going upstairs in the early going, now successfully going to the body, and it has paid off. It certainly has. It debilitated Braxton a great deal and opened up the uh, avenue for the uppercut. You notice, Ferdy, it is standing room only in the corner of David Braxton. I counted eight people in the corner of Braxton. Most of those are promoters that came to get their share of McCallum, I think. Well, Lou Duva, one of the former managers, one of the uh, several former managers of Mike McCallum, once said, 
If all of McCallum's former managers and trainers would attend McCallum's fights, they would all be sellouts. Well, as we started a list, Bob Arum, while well, before the action got hot, Chris Dundee is here from Miami, Lucian Chen, the great promoter from Jamaica, Phil Alessi from Tampa, Mickey Duff from London, and the Doovers from the main event. That's quite a collection of important boxing promoters here to see Mike McCallum today. Now, what does the great Emmanuel Stewart advise? Time to stop hustling. He said it's down to get some power in there and try to stop McCallum from coming on. I just don't see the same power in Braxton in the first, and now as you saw in the first two rounds. This is round five, just over a minute gone by, vying for the WBA junior middleweight title. McCallum defending his title for the second time. Left hook by Braxton did not have much on it, but Braxton following with the right hand and showing some signs. giving it a good shot to get this round back. He sees it slipping away, but McCallum, remember, has got that patience. He just waits it out. Good right hand by Braxton. McCallum holding Braxton so he could not get off the right hand. McCallum coming at Braxton from all angles. Oh, he fights from all angles, and he just waits you out till you get tired, and then he comes on. Very tired now, bending over so that those uppercuts of McCallum will start to land. But Braxton, who appeared to be on the verge of going down at the end of round four, able to come back strong, although another cut, this time over the uh, left eye, has been suffered by David Braxton. Serious repair work over the eye. Uh, this man, David Braxton, between rounds as we head to round six. A lot of work has to be done in the corner by an excellent corner man, Ralph Citro. Stewart telling him, you got to stay on top of this guy. He won the round, but is losing the fight in that McCallum is just waiting to land that right hand, and he is, is powerful, whereas Braxton has not much on his punches. What does your scorecard show? I have Braxton ahead, 48-47. Oh, good right hand for Braxton. Okay, Curious how McCallum is either so calm or cool that he just lets the whole round go by before he starts to fight. Just when he had Braxton almost knocked out, he let the last round, the fifth, go by and Braxton take it. But he holds to his style, which obviously has been successful, very patient, waits it out, and usually builds up the points. Reminds you a great deal of Eusebio Pedroza, who just can't get out of his game plan. He just stays there. He knows he's going to be there 15 rounds, and he doesn't care. Well, with the look of that cut, it does not look good over the left eye of Braxton and the degree of exhaustion you see in Braxton. I would doubt that this would go to 15 rounds. Stranger things have happened. We are live from Tamiani Park in Miami. Marv Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Saw McCallum complain about a low blow. Well, he has no right to complain. He landed some thunderous low blows in that last exchange. In the last round. There's 
it's another low blow by McCallum. Right under the B, where it says Braxton on his trunk. Less than a minute remaining in the sixth round. Well, you have the feeling that Braxton just had a zip on his punches. He's certainly throwing them and landing them. Ooh, ooh, nice, nice uppercut by Braxton. that began with the shot to the body. Coming up on 10 seconds remaining in the sixth round. We'll be back right after these messages. Is your money? On to round seven for the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship. Mike McCallum defending his title against David Braxton. McCallum comes in at 24 and 0, 21 by knockout out of Kingston, Jamaica. Now living in Brooklyn, David Braxton, 34 and 1, 24 by KO. And among the crowd here in Miami, Don Johnson, co-star of Miami Vice, Michael Talbot. So we have Crockett and Zwyten. On hand, Ferdy incidentally was uh, up for the romantic lead. For Miami Vice, a little known fact, but was just aced out by Don Johnson. I ended up with the Gator. Right now, the cut that's beginning to dribble, blood, has not been a factor in this fight, although it looked like it was going to be great corner work by Ralph Citro, has kept it closed. McCallum again, sticking to his plan, as we thought at the top of the show, an even fight, a battle of the wills, and McCallum is not being taken out of his game plan. He just keeps coming like old man Ruth. What about the heat factor? It is uh, better than 90 degrees outdoors and uh, with or without the television lights it has, I would, I would imagine somewhere in the area of 110 degrees at least in the ring. It is very hot here. The air conditioner has not worked. The lights are hot. That's all in the favor of McCallum who's from the islands where it's hot all the time in Jamaica. This round is finished McCallum. He's got Braxton tires, but he's just boxing, zipping along. No big offenses. No big disaster. Great right hand. out from the referee to have the doctor go up and look at the cut. All right, referee Roberto Ramirez calling for the timeout in this championship fight. Under the WBA rules, the referee can stop the bout. You hear, huh? Okay. Well, we've heard that before in other situations, but the ringside position just said one more round. So this certainly uh, puts David Braxton in a desperation situation. Well, Teddy Strull, the commission doctor here, has seen an awful lot of boxing. He said one more round if it continues like this, giving thereby giving the corner man some time to work on it. It really doesn't look that bad from here, does it? I mean, we have seen some monstrous gashes continue to fight. It just doesn't look that bad right now. Easy for you to say. <laughs> So we're closing in on the end of round seven. Well, the cut over the left eye of David Braxton, a major factor as we get underway in round eight. Mike McCallum defending his WBA junior middleweight title. David Braxton in big trouble. Venerable corner man Eddie Futch said, you've got this, all you got to do is pop at that eye and move. It's a cruel way to end the fight, but 
That cut is on the eyelid. It does not look particularly deep. It's not gushing blood, but in the opinion of Teddy true. one more round, and we'll see what happens. Ooh, good uppercut. And McCallum is taking aim, and the right on target with the left hand. Well, he's got an educated left hand, and that's one thing he is good at, popping and moving. It is okay. Braxton now has to go for broke. Braxton now has to gamble. He cannot afford to wait for the doctor to stop this. He might as well let it all go out, and that's what he's doing. Meanwhile, McCallum sticking and moving. Left hand by Braxton. You know, the problem is Braxton just has no steam in those punches. Meanwhile, you can note the referee Ramirez continues to check the uh, eye of Braxton, continues to lean in. Doing an excellent job. Look at his legs. than a minute to go. Round eight, scheduled for 15. Marv Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. From Miami, we are live on NBC Sports World. That's it. He has pulled it. Roberto Ramirez says it is all over. He did not like severity of the cut so Mike McCallum has successfully defended his WBA junior middleweight championship he has stopped David Braxton it is called late in round eight referee Ramirez on top of it throughout he continued to check it out and finally made the decision saying that's the story Mike McCallum retaining his WBA junior middleweight title. We'll be back to hear from the fighters right after these words. Back in Miami, moments ago, Mike McCallum able to successfully defend his WBA junior middleweight title by stopping David Braxton at 226 of round number eight. So McCallum now 25 and 0, 22 by knockout. Just a case of wearing down David Braxton, who had suffered that cut over the left eye. The uh, referee, Roberto Ramirez, kept checking it out the last couple of rounds and finally decided that was it. Mike McCallum is alongside the fight doctor, so let's go to the ring. Here's Ferdy. Champ. The one thing you do great is go to the body, but you didn't go to the body for the first three or four rounds. Why not? So my corner told me, this guy, the whole guy, Golden Iron, he's coming. I heard he was training to go to the body. I thought you know I'm good at the body. So I tricked him. He was looking for me to go to the body. I started popping that jam. You tricked him? I know him. he was vulnerable for the cut and everything. I just put it together. Once you saw that cut, were you confident that you would win? I know it's all over. But I know I'm going to live in that round. 15 more rounds. However more I'm going to be, I'm going to live in it. Pop. Eddie, as soon as you saw that cut, your instruction was to bop and get away. Box, box and move, box and move. Hit him with straight punches. Are you ready for the guys like uh, Tommy Hearns? He's Are you ready, ready for the guys? I won like Thomas Hearns. Hearns. He's been ready. I had something to prove ready. today to Emmanuel Stewart and the Crown Team. No grudge. I told him Nobody my, 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 my revenge is winning. Keep winning. I left him. I, I become a champion. Number one, I defend my title. Number two, I'm still winning. See, I know he hated Italy because everybody want to be able to win. I must apologize to the people in Italy. I know my promoter, Don Kane, to get it together so that uh, he can fight probably possibly in Italy one more time. All right. Congra because of Congratulations <laughs> once again, champion. I say one thing for yes. The people in Jamaica is watching me for the first time. Good. I must say hello to my mama. Hi, Savannah, happy birthday. To all my friends, Wilson boys in Brooklyn, 
and all my friends in Brooklyn, Jamaica. Mike McCollum did again. Back to Marv Albert at ringside. All right, thank you, Ferdy. In fact, uh, today a week-long cultural festival begins here in Miami, celebrating Jamaica's 23rd year of independence from Great Britain. So a happy day for Mike McCallum and the folks back in Jamaica. Coming up in a moment, a unique look at the fight from the point of view of what took place in the corners. Well, a disappointed David Braxton, as he is told that is, it is all over, as he is stopped in the eighth round by the champion Mike McCallum. For the rest of the untold story of what happened during the fight in the corners, we present a look at a feature we unveiled several months ago. Here it is. From the point of view of the corners, Mike McCallum moments ago stopping David Braxton in round eight. And as you can see, they are checking out the uh, eye of Braxton. And that is what uh, cost him with the referee Roberto Romero stopping the fight during the course of that eighth round. The official time, 226 of round eight as McCallum successfully uh, defends his title. We do have more boxing ahead here on Sports World two weeks ago. In